Welcome back to the What Nots Review Show, where each week we have a different story to talk about. It could be a comic book, could be a movie, an anime, a a TV show, all sorts of things. We read it, we watch it, we come back here and talk about it. My name is Kyle Springer, and I am joined by Melissa Wilkinson. Melissa, how are you? I'm doing good. We are both recovering from the massive dump of information we got at the Marvel San Diego Comic Con panel. (laughs) We are. We are super excited for all of that information. Information overload. Yeah. God, I did, man, did, did, who, who, who knew that it'd, it'd be Superman fighting Spider-Man in it, it with Tasmanian devil uh, in, <laughs> in, 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 in there? God, just uh, these corporations, right? Man, <laughs> <laughs> that's phase seven. The Tasmanian devil phase. This corporations just steamrolling everyone there yeah no we got information overload at comic con there's also a bunch of actual comic book news that happened yeah. this week too so that's neat um but but yeah i am like a kid in a candy shop here just being like oh this mm-hmm. is amazing so, yeah it's fantastic <laughs> Uh, but that is not what we are here to talk about this week. This week, we are here to talk about a German Netflix series entitled The Billion Dollar Code. Mm-hmm. Melissa, tell us about this one, because we, 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 we've been kind of uh, <laughs> and, and anticipating the day. Yes. We, we, we've been wanting to do this show on our podcast f- for a while now. Mm hmm. Uh, This is a fairly recent show. It came out earlier this year, late last year. And then it was late last year when we saw the trailer. We watched it live on an episode of The Captain's Log. We were that excited. And it it seems right up our alley. We've covered all of uh, the German Netflix series Dark on Mm the show before. One of the actors is in this. And we've covered all of Halt and Catch Fire, which is also a period piece tech drama. Yes. (laughs) We both loved and... To see this thing that's kind of like those things smushed together. Right. It's such an obvious win. And Mm -hmm. I told you at one point, you don't even have to come up with other pitches. When you decide it's billion dollar code week, you can just announce it. There are no other choices. We'll just do it. That is exactly what I did. I was like, Melissa, Uh this is the week. And you do exactly what I was was doing. Yes. Yes. The time is now. Billion dollar code week. Here we are. Um, yeah, I'm I'm super excited when we saw this, when this like popped up on the Netflix recommendations after watching Dark. Uh, also, I, I think in the midst of having watched Halt and Catch Fire. Yeah, uh, we, 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 I saw this and was just like, oh, this is perfect. Like, yeah, this is we, we need to watch this. Melissa will be so excited. I like I, this is great. Uh, and so, mm-hmm. yeah, we watched that trailer on one of our uh, 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 other podcasts. Uh, and we've we've just we've, we've been anticipating it each week. Mm-hmm. Um, so here we are. Billion billion dollar code week on the podcast uh like we said it it is a german television miniseries uh if you're here in the united states like both of us it is on netflix that is where you can Mm -hmm. watch it it is german but it's kind of half in english uh Uh they, they do speak a lot of english in the show because part of the show takes place in delaware uh, where <laughs> they are trying to sue g- 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 Google. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you are unaware of the show, um, the basic synopsis is that uh, the Harry's follows the developers of TerraVision, which if you don't know what that is, there's probably good reason. And that's what this show mm-hmm. is about. Um, yeah, it, they created this thing called TerraVision, uh, in which it is like a globe of the earth on on the PC and you can fly to anywhere you want on that thing. You can just zoom right in on that thing. Very similar to how Google Earth works. 
Uh, and that is the story that they created this and that sometime after words, Google Earth sweeps in and eats their lunch. Uh, mm-hmm. And they are being like, hey, that's that's actually our product. It's the same code that you got. You 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 stole it. <laughs> um, and uh, they go to tr- trial and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, it alternates between like the past when they were creating it yeah. and shortly after they created it uh, to modern day times when they are at the trial or preparing for the trial um, in, in most cases here. So it's an interesting show. It's only four episodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's real short. Um, but yeah, we were excited to dive into this mm-hmm. one. So, Melissa. Now that we've watched it, what did you think? I did enjoy it. I I like that central conflict. I like really diving into the legal proceedings of this thing. There's a whole segment of one episode where they're talking about pr- like how you dress and how you behave for trial. Like one yeah. of the characters holds up like three ties and is struggling to pick out which tie. They have to practice just walking up to the stand and sitting down over and over again. And they I think like it's the, the most level of detail. Thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I really like our central characters and their relationship to each other and to their work. It's four episodes; they're about an hour, maybe hour fifteen long, so it's fairly snappy as, mm-hmm. as far as these as these series goes. But I really could have used more to dive into it even deeper. Absolutely, I would have loved if this was like a two season. Uh, yeah they, man but but yeah i i, I think uh what they have in this mini series is this very finely crafted narrative uh of of, ju- of just what was happening to them what ha- happened and i think it wastes no time starting it wastes no time t- telling the story it's very tight-knit it works. I lo- I liked it. I I never felt like ah well they focused on this character too much. I don't really think we needed that or anything mm-hmm. like that. N- 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 never had that except for I want more. Uh, yeah, this was great. So yeah, I I en- enjoyed this one a lot. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. Check it out. It's a great period piece. If you like, if you like the. The early tech era period piece, which is a very specific genre, but it's a genre I'm finding I like based just on this and Halt and Catch Fire. It's like post Cold War, follow the Berlin Wall, Germany. They travel to Japan for a conference. Uh, the rest of it's set. In, I think this trial was in like 2014 or something. Not that it feels like an additional, you yeah. know, seven years ago period piece, but you do have another level. If you like a legal drama, if, if you like a lot of different things, you can find something to enjoy in the billion dollar code. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, if if you guys are familiar with the show Dark on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, one of the main actors in the billion dollar code was also in Dark. Um, let, me, let me pull up his name because I'm not sure. Sh- I, I don't actually know his name off yeah. the top of my head here. Uh, Leonard. Uh, well, all right. So that's the y- 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 younger one. So where is the mm. older version here? I got to say also the casting on here the show go. is so well done. You see these characters at multiple times throughout their lives. The casting's really consistent. The older versions really Very look like so. the younger versions. Um, Mark Washke, I believe is how you say that. That sounds the familiar. Name. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that is the guy that is in dark in dark. He played the like middle aged version of Noah. And if yeah. you think that's a weird way to describe it's a time Noah, travel show. Yeah, it's oh, a time we also travel have, show. <laughs> we also have 1980s Claudia Tiedemann in here for a little bit. I was happy to see her. We do. So it shares a handful of actors. Mm-hmm. Uh, but besides that, those are the only ones that I recognized. I d- didn't mm-hmm. even recognize the American actor or the, the ones who were supposed to be American oh, yeah. actors. I'm not sure if they actually were American Me actors either. or who knows what. But um, yeah, I, I had a blast watching this. This is based off of a true story. Uh, if we haven't mentioned that. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's 
interesting. I, I like what they did with the show. Uh, I kind of wish that this genre was bigger. Like there were more shows yeah. like this that I feel like I could recommend outside of Halt and Catch Fire, which I know we will recommend at the <laughs> end of this show. Uh, but yeah, j- just d- 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 there's something about this genre that yeah. I feel like is j- is just so cool because it has the like retro tech. You guys know that the like r- the like vapor wave, almost mm-hmm. cyberpunk. I-, I-, I guess it's not c- cyberpunk, but you're it is the that, team like, cyberpunk. R- I'm the team vapor wave. <laughs> right. Yeah. It is the like vapor wave outrun aesthetic. But with technology, but it's also a crime show, but it's also a drama, but it's also a thriller, but it's also a this and that. And just, man, I they do some fascinating things with this. So I, I, yeah, the, I just wish there was more. I think there's a lot of tales like this for more contemporary situations. You've got things like the We Crashed or Super Pumped or The Dropout any of these more recent slew of shows based on like startup media, startups yeah yeah but i don't think any of them go farther back than like 2009 or something in terms of like the the timelines they're displaying i haven't right. watched any of these yet i yeah. might get to them after after this well of like the more <laughs> period piece early tech ones run dry because i have to watch those now yeah yeah indeed um so yeah, go check out the billion dollar code on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's p- pretty clear we liked it a lot. I, I think we kind of expected to. Our expectations were ha- ha- high, but I think yeah. it delivered. Um, yeah. So good stuff. Check it out. If you want to try more international programming, I think this is a great place to start with it only being four episodes and with a, a decent amount of the dialogue being in English. This is a yeah. good a good way to step into the not genre the the world of international international TV shows for sure absolutely uh, well that is about it for our spoiler free mm-hmm. thoughts on the I mean I, it's it's one of those weird things of like what can we spoil if it was real life like it, it, I don't know but still uh, we will get into our spoiler filled d- discussion. Mm-hmm. Uh, shortly after this, we're about to take a break and do some housekeeping. So we will be right back. We put a lot of hard work into the shows that we make. And yes, we make multiple different shows here at The Whatnots. And we'd love it if you check them all out. You can find out more information on our website at thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. When you type in The Whatnots, all of our shows will pop up right there. Just don't forget to give us a nice rating and review if you like the shows. If you want to support what we do here at The Whatnots, patreon.com slash The Whatnots is the best place to do that. You can support us for as little as a dollar a month. You can get all kinds of exclusive content at the $3 tier. You can also get a shout out and a thank you on all of our shows at the $5 tier. You can support us on Twitch by subscribing to our channel at twitch.tv slash the whatnots. And we would love to have you all join us for our live streams and talk with us in the chat. And lastly, we have merch. If you'd like to grab yourself a shirt or a sweatshirt or a mug or something else, go to the whatnots.com slash store to pick up some merch today. And we are back. A big shout mm-hmm. out to all of our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. We could not do this without you. Thank it you. Means a lot. We appreciate it. Uh, cool things that we've been up to here at the at the whatnots. Uh, so on the captain's log, we just published our Comic-Con bingo episode. Yeah. Where we <laughs> predicted all of the stuff that M- Marvel was going to do here at comic-con as well as d23 yeah we just made we both made uh our own bingo sheets that would cover both panels yeah at both yes. conventions yeah uh so that is partly dated now interesting to see that that came out the morning we're recording this even though the, the hall h panel yeah. happened last night so uh, it, we might sound stupid as as uh, Helen that one of like why would you predict that? 
Uh, but right. we were we were having fun with that. Uh, speaking of Comic Con, there were a number of trailers that came out. Uh, so we have some trailer reactions that we filmed last night. Um, for Black Panther, World of Wakanda, for Shazam, Fury of the Gods, and for uh, She Hulk, the new Marvel Disney yeah. Plus show on there. So go check that out on our YouTube page uh, under the Reactor Core. Uh, yeah, that that, that Wakanda there. Forever trailer. I I watched it again after yes, we were yes. done recording, and then I watched other people react to it. It's it's a phenomenal teaser oh, trailer. <laughs> right. I incredible. It, this is one of the best trailers I have ever seen for anything. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It is good. Um cool. Uh that is kind of about it uh for housekeeping uh that we need to do right now. So let's get into spoilers. There you go. The Billion Dollar Code on Netflix. Um, let's talk about the 1980s, early 1990s, I guess. Yeah, yeah I think it was, it's like, not the 80s. It's like 94 or 95 is the year that they are working towards making what becomes TerraVision. They don't even right. name it until after they're, they're done with it to present at this uh, Kyoto International Tech Conference. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, Let's let's talk about that, though, first, because I, I, I thought this was interesting and fascinating of, of like, yeah, we've kind of seen and Diego and I partly grew up in that early tech boom, 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 mm. when, the, when the Internet was just starting to be a thing. Um, and, but like, what was that like in Germany? Like, I, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know much of the history of Germany outside of World War II. Right. Right. And yeah. Even then, like they t t t tell us like certain things like, hey, we won. Bam. There you go. That was, yeah. like, that was it. That's all. Yeah. All I don't. Our, our school <laughs> teaches us. <laughs> yeah. We don't. That's true. I don't know anything about like post Cold War, just civilian German life. Right. This was a nice look at it. Yeah. Um, and so to, to see that tech boom happening in Germany and what that was like to see the hacker culture uh, at the time that it is happening uh, was neat uh, that they that there was a hacker group. I don't know if they renamed the hacker. The hacker group uh, that they had in this show. Mm -hmm. I know a number of the characters in here were kind of combined into yeah. one in this show um, and and stuff like that, just for the sake of like, well, we can't really fit all of them into four episodes yeah. here. That's going to be overwhelming. Um, but yeah, like th they hacked the Pentagon. They they <laughs> they stole a bunch of maps from NASA. They did all yeah. sorts of stuff. Um, and. and yeah, like I'm surprised that almost wasn't brought up in trial that they stole all this map data from NASA. And that was after they like it. That w was while they were making this thing. It was not while they were in the hacker. Go, 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 go. Yeah. The Chaos Computer Club. Yeah. Um, so that was interesting. But I. Yeah, like I I liked to see what that was like and to see that uh, the German government was basically funding all of these programs to uh, to dive into technology, but at the same time, not really go anywhere with it is mm. what it seemed like um, that they just were funding things just enough that it it seemed like they were funding things and and they they could get actual funding but not enough funding to really explore what the technology yeah. could actually do and mm -hmm. push it mm -hmm. um yeah so I like, I, yeah i liked that i like the origin story that we've got karsten who is a multimedia artist he's like djing at some tech club and playing these like computer animations he's made of a globe. And then Yuri is a, a programmer 
who isn't really into the art stuff, but he goes up to Karsten and he's like, hey, your programming, like your visuals are kind of jumpy. Can I give you a hand with that? I think I can help you do this better. And then from there, they start building what's going to be TerraVision, which is just what if you could fly around the globe like Superman and zoom in and see your hometown or see the city you're going to take a vacation to before you even get there. And it's initially designed as like an art project, like an art installation, an exhibit people would go to. And it would be mm-hmm. the sort of live experience. And it's after they have success with that at that conference that they start thinking more about it. Like, what if you could zoom in really close and you could get information on individual businesses? What if this could be like a phone Street book? names. For, yeah. 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 And then that's where they hit a lot of roadblocks with all of the uh, and finances and information it would take. See your airplane as you're flying in the airplane and oh, they have yeah. screens in the back of every seat. And they're just like, that's a terrible idea. No one would do that. And then now that's what we, we have every everywhere. That's screens true. In 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 the back of airplane seats. There. I have not been on a plane since uh, 2013 and it was a very cheap oh, flight wow. to Orlando. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, um, it, it's yeah, they they start to just dream bigger and bigger of what you could do with this program and this technology. And a, a lot of it is stuff that we now have today um, between Google Earth and Google Maps and Map Quest when that popped <laughs> up uh, on on the Internet as well. Right. It's like, let's take Map right. Quest and Terra Vision. And like marry that like yeah there's so much yeah. you could do with that and i liked to see what they were trying to do and trying to think of yeah and that. it's so compelling because this is something you use every day i love to look at google earth stuff there that is such a specific feeling uh of this almost like cosmic delight and cosmic terror looking at things from above in a way you know like you're not supposed to do like you feel magical you worry that you're gonna like stumble on something terrifying like just like you scroll over a lake and the center of the lake is like so dark and so deep and you imagine how deep the lake is and you're like ah do you want to go back to looking at a house yeah yeah or even just all of the like street value shenanigans <laughs> you get on on google maps now where they they found the van and they staged some uh, you know picture <laughs> or something like that um yeah there's just that there's so many uses for this and that i think is the tragedy of this show is that they mm. found it they dreamed it and then it it just got taken and there's no real way for them to prove that it was actually stolen. You, you probably could code by code, like line by line, mm. like go through this. But even then to prove that in trial is just monotonous and it is so boring. And that is like part of the thing that comes up is like no actual jury is going to sit there and understand. that. Yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. Shit, it's completely unhelpful to just put them side by side and be like, all right, all right let's look and see. <laughs> right. Um, it's one of the great tragedies of this narrative that like they pretty much have proof that no yeah. Google stole large portions of this. It's just that when they get that technical expert in court, he can't sell it he can't make the jury understand what it is he's saying it doesn't land with them yeah right exactly um yeah it's it's an it's a fat fat fascinating show but yes so Mm. uh the main guy uh his name's carlston it's not carston carston yeah uh there's no l in there um he (laughs) It's so funny to see him up there, like trying to be like, VR is the next big thing, man. <laughs> uh, like, because that's still happening today. Like, uh-huh. v- VR kind of had a big boom, yeah, in the like the late 90s. Mm. And then it kind of went away. Uh, and then, like, l- mid 
2000, like a mid 2000 aughts is like when it started to come back. And yeah, now we have uh-huh. the PlayStation v- v- VR. We have the Meta Quest, which was Facebook's thing that they bought from Oculus. Uh, like there, there's multiple like VR headsets. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, you like it, that is the like next thing of like, oh, man, you can do all this in VR The like a, the, it's it's on this like resurgence. And personally, I still haven't bought into it. I don't believe it's there yet, but it has mm. come leaps and bounds from where he was in that like real yeah. slow, like. <laughs> pixelated like uh, and but but just as an art student like him trying to pitch this next big thing and just trying to bullshit what it actually is uh yeah i i understand that completely (laughs) and to to have them like rip it apart and be like this is just stupid and him just man i like face palmed when he was like and if i might be so bold to to be like this is the greatest art in, in the world right now. I was just like, oh no, <laughs> like that was it. <laughs> and that was his undoing. That was it. Like if he just <laughs> if he didn't say that, he would have maybe had something. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was mm-hmm. the, I I liked his character. Yeah, uh, and and then how how quickly he pivoted to I. I need to be like, like he really did. It. Like when, when he starts to be like, I need to be the next Steve J- 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 yeah. jobs, but I need to be that for Germany. I need to, to yes. be the, the next uh, whoever like to, to get that startup culture and try and translate that to Germany and try to be the first one to do it. And who knows if he was actually the, the first one to do it. Um, in in germany but still for narrative purposes in this show being that first one to see him pivot to that really sh- shows you i think the kind of like j- just the kind of character he he is the kind of person he is to always want yeah. to be on that cutting edge man here's the here's the next big thing mm-hmm. but like here like and then the tragedy with art too is that to make a living doing it you kind of have to sell yourself out uh Mm -hmm. right you have to find some way to monetize it and so that's what he does like he's he he's like all right well i need to be the one to figure out how to monetize this and aesthetically he nails it right yeah (laughs) and he kind of sacrifices himself to do that or he's like all right i won't do the art stuff i will do the like startup Mm. business stuff i can dabble right but like we got our sculptor to do the interface we have our programmer we have our coders all that stuff and he's just like i will focus on selling us um yeah somebody needs to fill this role and i'll do it yeah, he's an interesting, I, interesting yeah. dude. I like our two leads. I like their relationship with each other. Uh, like you said, this origin story where one of them just sees the other one working on something as an art project and says, from a technical standpoint, like, I don't know the art, but I know the computer language. I can help you with this. And like Yuri's yeah. very, very focused on the job. I really like that first episode that's just about the, the run to the Kyoto conference. And how absolutely like, pressed against the wall they are for that whole year. Like spending nights at the office, especially Yuri, who has to be the one who has to crack the actual algorithm to do this. Yeah. And how he like works himself into need, having a panic attack and needing to go to the hospital. And then when he's there and like Karsten goes with him and he's talking to him and then they he realizes what he needs to do. He like rips the IV out of his arm and he's like, I'm going back to the office now. I think I've cracked it. They're working like up to the minute at that conference, getting this thing to work right. I always love to see stories of that, of just the work hours and the passion and the just 
time you sink into things like this, the amount of trial and error that goes into this sort of a, a, a an artistic and professional pursuit of, I just have to sit down at my computer and try absolutely everything I can think of until I figure out what it is. And then when I figure out what it is, then do I have the time to actually make that happen before this deadline? Yeah. I, the, I, oh, go ahead. No, well, the, another interesting part of their arc together is after they make a big show at this Kyoto conference, it's a big success. They go to all these other conferences and they go to Silicon Valley and mm-hmm. they go to Silicon Graphics, which is sort of the, uh, aspirational american version of what they're trying to do and there they meet brian anderson and they see this like dot com boom like the office it's like we have an espresso machine and they go back and they're like we gotta get an espresso machine we gotta do that like yuri is so taken with it and carson's upset that like he might stay there he might leave their their art com company they founded together behind and go work for this company in america so he like makes in berlin what he knows yuri right. w- wanted to go do in america like he kind of does it for him yeah i i don't think this show ever really gets close enough to be that there is some like gay subtext be- between them i don't think there is but but that like it i i mean i think it's so sweet because at the end by yeah. the end of the show the show like you can tell that he really cares for Yuri, and like he, yeah. he recognizes the brilliance that that he ha- ha- has, and it j- just that the idea of this whole this whole like connection to Superman, and that's how this whole thing started. Like that is like the the fact that that keeps coming back up, and that's like why he he wanted to make it. Just like all the, like he does a lot of things understanding he's like this is what yuri would want or like i i know that he likes this kind of thing even if he doesn't mm. get it like a hundred percent right he's yeah. trying to build this environment around him to for ha- to have him be the star right um and it's it's just it's so sweet it's just like oh, yeah yeah <laughs> like at the end end of the day it feels like you're trying to do the right thing here yes yeah. yeah, yeah. He was never. You said that he does kind of sell out, but he's he wants to make this profitable so that his team can thrive, so that they can have the opportunities there in Berlin in their right. home that, and they don't have to go somewhere else to like get that in their lives. He's like, "Do you want to go over there? No, I'll bring it to you. We'll do it together. We'll do it here yeah. at home." Yeah. That's, that's Speaking me. of gay subtext. So they meet Brian Anderson and then they go to this like pre Burning Man festival in the desert. And Yuri is so taken with Brian, really admires him, follows him around. He's telling him all this stuff about their project. And later you find out that he pretty much told Brian how everything worked. Mm -hmm. And we never see that scene. And there's some weird. There's some missing time for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I was really thinking Yuri and Brian slept together that night. And like as part of that, it's like pillow talk. He revealed how his algorithm worked. And I was yeah. thinking, oh, that's going to come out in like the finale in this final episode where they're both on the stand. And it, it never does. You never do find out exactly what was this conversation? Why did you tell Brian everything about how this algorithm worked? Yeah, it's it, the the subtext is there, but it's l- I mean it's expertly crafted in the sense that it is so ambiguous that yeah it, it could be a million things, right? I mean, right? Yeah, you know, they're doing yeah, all those drugs is, that night too. Yeah, there's a, a lot of exactly. reasons why he might have revealed it, but you never find out exactly what situation were you in? What was the dynamic? What was going on between you and Brian that night when you told him all of this? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's like you could also even just say like the excitement of having yeah. someone understand you. Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, I've acted in a similar manner before when I meet another like comic book nerd yeah. who knows like, <laughs> like you like post-crisis era DC universe too. Man, <laughs> did, 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 like we're just off to the races. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, 
yeah like i i i understand that feeling um and it's it, it it's just it expertly crafted in, in the sense that it could be anything like as mm-hmm. who knows um but i i think this show also does something really important with yuri's character uh and at least display the the symptoms of crunch of of yes. work where you you like don't eat don't sleep don't do all of that stuff it probably could have done more uh mm. i know they they try and get him more help than just that one hospital night yeah. and the show is like oh he solved it and then they go 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 mm. on and do, do, do the thing there um but i think right now especially in the video game I- 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 industry crunch is a major topic right now mm. of just like hey this is probably not a good thing you're you're overworking people mm. uh it, it can have negative health consequences negative mental consequences you're probably underpaying them as a result uh all, all, all that stuff but at the same time having people who are extremely passionate about what they mm. do, 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 do not necessarily defending it but be, be being like hey i understand uh, like yeah. <laughs> when, when, when you have that creative spark sometimes mm-hmm. there is nothing that can stop you and i've experienced that i i know exactly what that's like where i don't sleep i don't eat or i eat terribly uh mm. right and i just i'm focused on this one thing of like oh man i i, I can make this one meme that we can do on the captain's log stream to just <laughs> a, a thousand spider all <laughs> dancing on screen and we 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 have that i've b- 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 built it and i'm i like that is a thing that i spent uh, countless hours making <laughs> countless right? hours making a spider-man <laughs> dance overlay for a twitch <laughs> live stream right yeah um or or just to to create all of the motion the animation you see as our our intro here on the podcast or the the screen that you see behind us all that stuff to make all of that i've been like i think i can make this look neat right and then i'm up till like eight in the morning just making this stuff and it's like oh man we have the review show in a couple hours um I guess I should get some soda <laughs> and some ah! chips, right? Like, and, and that's soda it. and chips. <laughs> That'll give me the energy I need. Exactly. Um, and yeah, like I, I know what that's like, and there's really no stopping you from doing that, except yourself. Uh, mm. And y- you really have to either limit yourself or do that stuff. I. I I think it's at least important that they showed this, that, hey, this is a thing mm. that happens, that people can get so hyper fixated on this stuff that it can, it can be a bad thing mm. uh, that it whether they have solved their problem, their creative problem or not. And they're just working and working and working and they can't figure it out. It can lead to some not so good stuff. Mm-hmm there so i I thought it was at least interesting that they showed that yeah and if this was a a longer show we could have spent more time in that and spent more time with the okay now it's after the kyoto conference and then we see that they do have a lot of success and they book other conferences and other exhibitions but like what is your downtime how do you relax are you able to successfully turn yourself off and give get the rest you need after that conference or are you immediately like revved back up again by the success you just had? Yeah. We yeah. do we do get a, a nice look at Yuri's mental health like throughout different periods in the series that he's always had uh an anxiety disorder of some kind. And you see this like in the in the trial practice, you know, in the in the practice interviews they have, like within their own law firm before they go to trial, which I didn't know that's what it was at first. Maybe if I like new legal dramas better, I would recognize, okay, this isn't like officially on the record part of the legal process. These are their dry runs just within their own office. Figured it out pretty quickly that that's what they were doing. 
But even still, it was hard to tell the guy lawyer, like, where exactly did he sit in this? Is he just playing devil's advocate or right? Because there, there were some scenes that made it see like, is he really on the same team as them? But like, why are why are both of the lawyers there after hours just kind of chumming it up? Being yeah. Like, like what what's g- 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 going on? Yeah, here? yeah it's I, not clear I at figured first out that, that it was like, OK, they're preparing them. They're yeah, grilling them yeah. to figure he's, out their weaknesses. He's playing the enemy lawyer and he's playing it really hard to to prepare him. He's like, I am going to ask you the hard questions like we need to get yeah. this down in our own office, like before you go and you do this on trial. And he does hold up to the trial. But there are moments where like. Uh, I think when the the tech expert who they brought in, who like sat in the in the cold room and like read all of the Google code, he's trying to explain it to the jury and the jury's not getting it. Yuri just storms out. He's furious. Like he operates on such a a, a higher level, like in terms of his mm-hmm. knowledge and his passion about the subject. And he gets really frustrated when he has to deal with people who don't understand, like even remotely, like he can't handle a layman in any fashion. (laughs) He storms out and he's like, they're not getting it. Like, this is not going well. And Carson is to come and uh, to kind of coax him into coming back into the trial. And then I love when Yuri straight up like leaves the process entirely, like his family's from Hungary and he leaves these pre-trial dry runs. And he just goes back to Budapest and Carson's like, OK, I know where he went. I'm going to go track him down. And they have this nice uh, reconnecting moment where, where Carson's really putting himself out there. Like, no, this means a lot to me. I want our names. I want your name to be listed as like the creator of this software. Like, I know you're really frustrated with what the process is to get there, but we need to get there here. I brought you. Uh, d- d- kebabs from the kebab stand we used to always go to. I love the continual return to that little food truck in that yeah. little d- grass lot somewhere in Berlin. Must be a good kebab stand to have lasted right. that long, right? I wish I got a good look at what it is they're eating because I think they refer to it as a kebab stand, but it looks like they're it eating some like sort burger. of sandwich. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I've never seen like it's kebab. Is it like a? Like a euro, it's not like a euro. It looks like a sandwich. I wish I knew more. I wish I knew more about this food. Somebody teach me how to make this, please. Benching with Babish, <laughs> come to my aid. <laughs> and then there's a really beautiful moment where uh, Yuri's in like his family's old house, and Carsten's looking at these pictures and these trophies and these awards that his dad got. His dad was this athlete who you can tell was always disappointed that his son was completely inathletic and like only yeah. liked computers and just played pong obsessively. And he Neary talks about how his dad always wanted him to go off the high dive, but he was too scared. And Karsten's like, is that pool still open? And they have this like pre trial like ritual that they undergo where they're like strip down. We are jumping off the high dive. Now you are doing this. Now you were conquering this. And then we're going to walk into that courtroom and we're going to dominate. And it's a, a really lovely end to episode three. Yeah. Speaking of the a- a- endings, I think the cliffhanger at episode one was great. Um, the, 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 the show wastes no time g- getting started and jumping yeah, right into, yeah. OK, we have this idea. Let's make it. Let's make it. All right. We have Kyoto in a year and it's a race to that. And then they have K- Kyoto and all that stuff. Meanwhile, in the pr- present day, he's explaining all of it. And then at the end, he's like, yeah, and that's when we made our biggest mistake ever. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it was just like, uh, I wouldn't know what the biggest mistake ever was. Like, yeah. Next, <laughs> um, yeah. This, the second one, the, the ending to episode two, in hindsight, is maybe the weirdest scene in there. I don't think it makes sense. I mm-hmm. it it works as a dramatic scene, uh huh. But I I don't know what the purpose of of it. Besides, I don't that, remember what, specifically what the end of episode two so is. One of the things that happens in the show is that after things after they realize that in the nineteen uh, nineties that their product has been stolen, 
and that yeah. there's nothing they can do. Things kind of go bad for Arkham, um, and they kind of separate and go their own ways. Uh, Karsten and Yuri end up not talking for a yeah. long, long time just because they're so mad at one another. Um, or at least Yuri is so mm-hmm. pissed off at Karsten. Um, but it, yeah, so that's where he's he's like, I we made I made the biggest mistake of my life, which they don't necessarily pinpoint to one particular yeah. thing, but it's kind yes. of the events of things that happen that lead up to them separating. Um, but then because they haven't been on speaking terms, the agreement for them to do this trial is that they don't want to see each other until they oh, absolutely right. yeah. have to, to, yeah. to. So they're doing this questioning separately. Um, yes. <laughs> and at it, it, the end of episode two, Yuri just storms in to, to where <sighs> like present day Karsten is, is preparing mm. for the trial and just is mean and gruff and just looking there like, <sighs> and, and like, <laughs> That's it. It just ends with that. And I'm like, yeah. oh, man, some shit is about to go down. And then they just never mention it again. Not. Yeah, not exactly. No. <laughs> and, like, it's like what? I, I, again, like, this is I, I can understand it. Like, man, that was a great cliffhanger. I want to see what happens. But besides that, as its purpose, there was no purpose to that scene there. And I was just like, I, mm. Sure. I guess. Yeah. (laughs) This is where I wish the show had like another hour on it to sort of flesh out this, these connective bits like that. (laughs) Let's, I want to talk about the, the law team. I really liked that lead lawyer. I think her name was Leah. I believe so. Let me look it up. Uh, while you, you, you can continue to talk. Yeah. I'll look it up. I, know, I just thought that actress was, was very compelling and you don't know a lot about her at first. Except that you can tell she is on the side of these guys. Like she believes in them. She wants them to win. And her partner, who you eventually find out isn't as smarmy as you have seen him be. That was a lot. A lot of that was an act to like prepare Yuri and Karsten for trial. But mm-hmm. he's like, you can't get attached to these things. Like some things win and some things lose. Like what's, why are you so passionate about this? And she talks about how she studied computer science before she was a lawyer. And also she knows German and English, which is amazing. The fact that they are able to find so many people who are also bilingual seems like a wonder to me who took like four years of French class and doesn't remember it. Well, it's so that's the, so first of all her, uh-huh. n- her the character's name is Lilea Hosworth um mm-hmm. played by Lavinia Wilson who is a German actress okay. yeah um so that's the thing is that i i think i mean i i guess it's fairly safe to say that english is a very prevalent language internationally mm-hmm. uh for better or or worse because i remember watching interviews uh for some of the actors in dark and yeah they're speaking in incredible um and it's it's kind of striking that it's like it's not just oh this is a british actor that had to do an american accent Uh it's like no this is a german actor yeah that also speaks English like they are actually bilingual that's still like as much as like the international content that I do watch I've seen multiple German shows I'm big into anime and Korean shows and I've seen some Mm. from South America just to see the pure number of like oh yeah yeah, they also speak English is still it's still just like this is amazing People are so talented. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. I remember how to say butterfly in French. <laughs> That's it. All I know is but, bye bye butterfly from the Pokemon <laughs> anime. That's it. <laughs> Adu. A Liblulia. I think <laughs> that's butterfly. So you don't even you remember go. anymore. I got to brush up on my French or something. Yeah. <laughs> Start something else. But 
Leah has this backstory. Where she's like, I studied some computer science before I got my law degree. And when I worked at this firm, I was the only person who knew enough to handle all of these patent dispute dis- case, patent dispute cases. And she's like, I had to tell so many people over and over again, no, we can't take your case. She's like, she says that the what Google did to yeah. Artcom is something she's seen before, where a larger company tells a smaller company, we uh we would like to to buy you, buy you for like five million dollars. And then the company provides them a lot of documentation and paperwork and like schematics and diagrams and algorithms on like how they make the thing. And then the larger company's like, no, we're not gonna buy you after all. Thanks, but no thanks. And then later that larger company makes something just like what the smaller company made. But I, it costs I, like ten hmm? I, I think it, the important note is that they they say they, they express they want to buy them, but they don't give a number in hopes oh, that the, the smaller oh, right. company gives the number. Yes. And if it's under 10 million, yes. that's when they're like, OK, we're not going to buy you. We're just going to steal your thing. We're going to make something. Similar. Right. Like if, they, if it's like above the... 10 million, then it's probably it's like, OK, if we do actually steal their thing, there might be some monetary ramifications and yes. stuff like that. There is a bit more of a risk. Yeah, so. like the trick of the thing is that it always costs more to pursue this lawsuit than the company or the product was initially valued to be like you could fight and you could win, but you will not win any sort of money. Like, like you will put yourself in debt pursuing this. So time after time, like she has to send these rejection letters until she gets the one from Karsten. It was Karsten, like later on in his life, who decided to to fight for this, to fight for what him and Yuri made together. And she saw that there was the email from Google. Tried Mm -hmm. to do it a number of times. Yeah. Too, because she in 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 the courtroom scene, she's like, they've tried to fight this on numerous Mm. occasions. Asians, which we don't really see we see yeah. the initial thing and then we see, yes. see the one where it's happening yeah. there so yeah they must have again done again i wish we had a little more time to like see some of the things that are mentioned happening off screen but because there was this bit mentioned in an email that's like if we collaborate with you then we could we could buy the software for five million dollars or whatever and she's like that contingency of collaboration has not been in any of these other cases i've looked at you have something here this could work and she's like fighting for these guys because she does sincerely care for them and cares for their case but also because they are a symbol to her of every other case she has had to turn down in the past she's really passionate about it she has cool clothes Although I do, I did feel kind of lost in time in the in the fourth episode with the trial stuff because she's wearing the same suit the entire time. I think she switches out the blouse, but it's the exact same jacket for I think like four days. And I don't know if that's part of the law procedure, like to avoid any distractions. We need our lawyers in the same lawyer costume for the entire trial. Well, that's the thing. She's a lawyer from Germany. She's not a big time lawyer. Cause like, mm. well, I mean, she, she d- 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 does seem to be at a like a successful firm. Right. Mm. Um, but yeah, they are going to America to do this trial, which is an interesting thing. So I don't know if the the character. Yeah, I mean, I guess she would be a German lawyer. So even that is interesting that she is a German law- lawyer taking a case in the United States. I I don't understand exactly how that works. Well, I think they had to go to, they go to Delaware because that's like where Google and a lot of other companies are registered as their home because there's very big tax breaks in Delaware. Yeah. No sales tax there. Yeah. Mm. Um, But, but although when my point is that she's Mm. traveling, so probably that's true. Bring her whole war judge, judge, robe. If she was a big time lawyer, probably would have brought multiple suits, but it seems to just be kind of middle of the road successful, but not like super mm. famous German lawyer. And then in comparison, like all the super to famous like, German lawyers, right? But like <laughs> in, in comparison to where then she stands in the United States is 
maybe small time. I don't know. I, I don't. But I don't remember being clear on where she was. Lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> one jacket. I got to tell you, I don't remember being clear on exactly where the law firm was from. And now I'm yeah. going back and trying to remember if the private scenes with her talking to the other lawyer were in German or if they were in English. Now I don't remember. I don't know their origin story. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean that's the that's the thing that I'm unsure of, though. Like, if they are from the United States and have traveled to Germany to do all of this stuff, but they weren't doing interpretation, like they were. Sp- I like right. the fact that, yeah, it's, it's it's a little bit confusing. Right. It seems like such a small thing for me to ask. Hey, would you clarify, like, who has learned German and who has learned English? Right. Yeah. I don't think it matters, but I still wish I knew it. Yeah. Um, let's talk about this tr- tr- trial and the, yeah. the courtroom scenes uh, and, and, and stuff like that. Cause, yeah, there was some some interesting stuff that happened in that we've already mentioned the expert on the code mm. who looked at this and was like yeah it's basically been in infringed upon mm. uh, and they they make very clearly that like the jury is just so bored like, right. <laughs> like there's one there's one woman who has her eyes shut <laughs> <laughs> which is just like oh no like you, yeah you've I, lost them um i i wish we got a little bit more emotion from a jury and perhaps that is your responsibility as a juror is to try and remain as like stone-faced as possible we would cut over to the jury and sometimes they would look confused but i wasn't able to tell by looking at them what direction the trial was going and i don't know if i should have seen that or not yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I guess you can say by the fact that Google Earth is still a thing and still the yeah. thing. Yeah. Right? But also, like, they they say, like, the, as the show is named, the billion dollar code, like, Google would have had to pay them a lot of money, not just necessarily a single billion, right, mm. but multiple billions, and that's the thing, like as seismic as yeah. that would be, it's doable still. Like I, mm. I as a video game fan, like here I am in my PlayStation shirt, right? Uh, mm. Like as a video game f- fan, I just saw Microsoft buy a company for sixty nine billion dollars. What? And move on. And then, like, and this is like after they had bought an, uh, had bought another company a uh, handful of months before, before for like hundreds of millions. And so it, it's just like, like th- this is ridiculous. Like, uh, yeah, th- if if they wanted to, they could have probably just paid it and moved on, even if it was in the billions. Mm. And, and, and like that to me is just baffling just like, mm. what the hell like uh, that's that shouldn't even be possible <laughs> yeah uh, but here it is and so yeah i think that's also partly why still no one to this day has heard of of vision because even if they did win and they had to pay billions it just would have kind of moved on I feel like, mm. which is a tragic thing to think about. Um, but but yeah, the, the show does the old bait and switch where uh, mm. they they have Brian Anderson be like, yeah, I remember you. I stole oh, it. And, yeah. every, and yeah. everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. And we're so happy. And then they go party and you see, see, see them all just like, yeah. And then it's like, <laughs> but that's not what happened. Uh, rewind and yeah. then they do the whole thing and he's just like I don't remember you right I, yeah and it's just like was, fuck was that bait and switch effective for you yes and no mm. like the way Brian is mentioning things in trial and the way that they are dealing with him and interacting with him there is this interaction 
um, which this goes back to our our scene where Carson at the end of the day is mm. kind of sacrificing himself for Yuri and wanting mm. Yuri to be the star. He can runs him in the courtroom and is like and is just like, what the fuck, dude? If mm-hmm. if not for me, for Yuri, like you mm. two were best of buds like i don't Mm -hmm. know just like you guys i know that you know him i know that you remember him like there is absolutely no way that you don't remember him because of the impact you made on his Mm -hmm. life there's just no way and i felt like the way that that got to him the way it looked like it got to him in that moment i can see that relating to him opening up some and maybe being tripped up in some way Mm. in court to yeah have that then spill out um and uh, yeah we don't know if this was a he slept with him to get the coat we don't know we don't know yeah. if, if this is him just being manipulative uh it, 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 but yeah it the way it se- seemed like it affected him in that one scene it seemed like mm, maybe something could right. have c- come of that of that i i did believe for a second brian saying yes we couldn't have done this without TerraVision because we have seen him to be uh a man who does have like big feelings and does like admire good work when he sees it like yeah. he's got enough of a a a man you know, like i'm a human i love humankind i love what humankind creates he's got like enough of a hippie soul in him that you could see him admitting i think what these people did is incredible that's such yeah. good work that was a big inspiration for me but Especially, all the celebration stuff we see after he says that did feel like, like oh, this feels okay. off. I don't yeah. think this is true. <laughs> yeah. But like, I, I think especially with the emphasis that the lawyers put on presentation in court and yeah. preparing, mm-hmm. we don't know how much preparation Brian Anderson had. Right. Yeah. Or just being an employee of Google, he probably has some, but we don't know mm. the extent of that. Like you said, he is also this kind of techno hippie. I, if, I don't yeah. know if that's the right word, but but like he is this like hippie in a sense that he just wants like free information and like all right. Like it just the way that Yuri connected to him, they had a kindred spirit. Right. And Yuri absolutely is like the like we need freedom of information like the the promise of what the internet was when it first started Mm. and here he is with this like long hippie hair he's in this like white like canvas looking suit Mm. like it just man like he he looks like someone who could just kind of be oblivious to all of the, the the like technical stuff of a courtroom because mm-hmm. that's just not his expertise mm-hmm. right and for him to say something that is like that was it that was our our our, our, <laughs> our, our thing yeah it's like, i can see that happening um but yeah that is that is not what happened um mm-hmm. but uh yeah th- i mean i i do kind of like the idea that hey even if they had won, they still would have been like, yeah, no, fuck you. We're not taking uh-huh. my, 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 my money. We are basically just making the precedent for mm. now smaller like yeah. startups and stuff like that nowadays. Um, but again, that's not what happened, which sucks. I would have loved a big fuck you mm. Google show. Uh, that mm-hmm. would have been fantastic as much as I use Google every single day, right? Uh, and then wearing a PlayStation shirt, I, I, I'm I, <laughs> not a big f- fan of these giant corporations uh, and, and stuff, stuff like that. Um, so, sucks. Yeah. But <laughs> what, 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 what we got 
So. Mm-hmm. I do. Oh, I think the show ends on an all right note. Uh, yeah. I do like that they there's some local like arcade bar they're going to, Karsten and Yuri and Leah to like unwind after the trial. Uh Has her Pong. and Yuri are still playing Pong. I thought yeah. Pong is like the one constant in Yuri's life. <laughs> and I love when he figures out that he can hack the like sono speakers at the bar and get it to play German nineties techno dance <laughs> music. <laughs> They almost have the like uh the from from Falcon and Winter Soldier when uh <laughs> what's his name is sitting there just like yeah the Zemo dance music. yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah I I love the music in this show uh d- just the 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 opening credits scene is really neat uh yeah. d- just yeah it it the whole thing was neat I liked the end credits a lot. How they yeah. mixed. It's not like the like remember the Titans style end credits <laughs> where it has the picture of the character yeah. and the text right next to him. And Karsten in real life went on to go do this and that. And he he lives with his wife and kids in Nebraska. Now, right. Uh, uh, <laughs> they mix in the photos into yeah. the design of the yeah. end credits. And it is treated artistically, aesthetically, like it is mixed in with all of this. I loved that. I thought that was mm-hmm. fantastic. Um, yeah, I, I, I like what we got. I want more of it. Like I just, mm-hmm. man, this was yes. cool. This was neat. It was cool. I, I liked learning about the tech stuff. I liked learning about the law stuff. I one of my favorite sequences is when that, um like sort of trial coach comes in and tells him yes. about like how to sit down in the chair, how to dress and also how to uh, how you, the, the lawyer who's um, interviewing you, I I've seen law shows. The, the lawyers interviewing you on the stage is uh, they'll keep giving you like yes or no, or maybe questions and they'll get you into a rabbit hole of just like the same question over and yes, over again. Like, no, yes, maybe. yes, 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 no, yes, no, 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 no. Yeah. And he's like, you will like get in your head about it. Like, it's, like it's not how you're supposed to talk. It's a weird way to be in a conversation. It'll make you act up. It'll make you kind of bristle against that. So you need to break that repeated pattern of just yes, 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 no, 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 and ask like, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Could you please repeat that? Could you rephrase the question, please? Like, just break your verbal response pattern, and that'll kind of shake that tension off and it'll right. give you kind of a fresh start right like, that's a like really that a neat lot. tactic yeah i've never heard about that before and now i've got something i can look for in other legal dramas i'm going to watch right or or j- 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 just the fact that like hey you're the expert here like you can confuse them with technicalities and yeah. jargon that yes they don't even know how to then proceed after that and ask you a question after after mm-hmm. that i thought that was fantastic and when yeah. when you see that click for them in modern yes. day time they are ecstatic they are just like yeah. oh this is so cool oh, this is what whoa, we're good whoa. at we, we can do it yeah like oh, we <laughs> got them on the ropes um and we, yeah when they get back in that like private room after that that first day or that that i'm not sure what day it is but they're like they have this moment again of reconnecting where they're like, Oh man, it was so cool that you said this one thing and you asked and yeah. then you can feel like they have this like nerd out moment that I was just like, Oh, this is brilliant. I love this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I, man, I, I, I wish this show was longer and yes. more in depth. I would have loved to have more characterization from the uh, uh, other members of uh, art and com, right? Yeah. Uh, just like what happened to them exactly? Like we get a few interview scenes um, with their like older version mm-hmm. characters, but mm-hmm. not much. And I like, it's also the thing of like, I don't know if those were the actual people, because those interviews were d- 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 different than the rest of them. I don't, or I don't think so. Was, yeah, at, that's the thing. 
Well, after you watch this on Netflix, it gives you this like 28 minute like making of the billion dollar code. Which I did like, not mini docu- watch that. One. I watched it nice. and it it shows you a lot of the people involved and it's not. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of one to ones like I wasn't able to pick out like, oh, like it's like I think you're the Karsten and I think you're the Yuri and I think you're like the sculptor guy. The only clear allegory was Karsten's wife, the art curator. Like gotcha. she is somebody like you can tell that she's very clearly based on a real person. I don't know if they were married. I don't know if they had the whole relationship they did. But there is a woman credited as art curator and friend of art com. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, like I said, I know that a number of characters were kind of mixed yeah. into their like into one singular character. Um, I I don't know why I'm referring to real people as characters, but yeah. these real yeah. people were then amalgamated into this you know one single character. Uh, just for the sake of the show but yeah i would have liked to see more of their stories and what happened with them what they went on to do yeah. how they felt about this what their thoughts were on this trial mm-hmm. were they contacted did it did they get questioned in trial did uh, they get interviewed and had to show some video uh in the trial or something mm-hmm. like that or do they want nothing to do d- d- yeah. d- 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 with it um yeah i would love that i would love more of the lawyers preparing or learning how to do their their tactics and mm-hmm. just like because they they too have a problem that could almost parallel this just like okay we're up all night like beating our heads tomorrow we yeah. need to do that i i don't know how to do, 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 do this thing and then yes someone says one thing and they're just like that's it yeah right like that's what we we, we do like i i want that um mm-hmm. yeah but i, I mean yeah I, like man, my what we got was fantastic though yeah i really enjoyed this i loved the kind of moody atmosphere of like the 90s Berlin oh, yeah. that we were in. It's a great looking show. There's frequently like really nice sets. Like uh people just have beautiful houses. They're in beautiful hotels. I I'm really wondering if like the courtroom that they filmed is really in Delaware. That Probably looks very not. European. It looks like it's European and they just put English language like justice. In <laughs> fairness, equality signs outside on the statues. It, it would probably be in Latin, though, not English. Right. But I, they speak Latin everywhere. I don't know. I, yeah, my only complaints about the show is uh, there needs to be more of it to just sort of have a little more breathing room and a little bit more detail for certain aspects of it. Yeah, I feel like six would have been more appropriate than four, yeah. in my opinion. But even then... I'm sure I would have said the exact same thing. Like, six <laughs> yeah. is too short. Man, I like but give I, me a whole but like, I, two or three seasons of this. That That'd might be, amazing. be too much, but I do like that the four episode length makes it very accessible to people. Yes, like I said absolutely. earlier, I think if you want to wa- start watching foreign language content, this is a really good, especially foreign language television, not just movies. This is a great like short series that you can jump into. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, do you have any other kind of final thoughts on billion dollar code here? Oh, it, it'll make me be a lot more thoughtful when I use Google Earth and like which I so will continue to use. But let's think about the, the that office in Germany where the people made it. Think about their workspace. Think about their lives. Think about Pong. Yeah. Yeah. yeah think of Pong. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, the l- l- last thing I want to say, which we kind of mentioned at the start, was the casting was, I, I think, really, yeah. really good. That was something we praised d- 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 Dark about mm-hmm. to see these different, like, multiple versions of the same character in different time periods. Yes. And I think, yeah, for the most part, that like, in this show, they, like, yes, that's, I feel like that's what that character would look like as like the younger or the older version like that man like uh, that's just neat like i i don't under uh, 
understand. I mean, I do understand how they do it. They just find someone that looks like them. But it, <laughs> still, it's it's just like, man, they they nail that so well that it's just it's kind of fascinating. Whereas here in the United States, like we we have seen movies and TV shows where it's like, oh, that's the younger version of this. And there's the older version. And mm. you're just like. I guess. Right. Like, <laughs> I, yeah. All right. If you say so. <laughs> sure. And it's like they don't really look anything like each other, mm. but you're just like, whatever. Right. It's 20 years down the road and who knows what, mm. what their life consisted of. So. But yeah, great casting. I liked this a lot. So mm-hmm. good stuff. Good. Um, well, let me open up our bingo cards here. It is about time for bingo. Uh, so if it is pulling up, I will switch us over to bingo. Here we are. Um, okay. No begin human trials. No villain with a pet. Um, Here's one that I want to make an argument for. Yes. Superman analog. So. Yes. Yeah. Here's here's the thing. When I first mentioned that, I intended that out of when we read the comic book Irredeemable. Yeah. Like there is a character that is. Right. Basically meant to be Superman. Mm. Um. But is is not. He is the Plutonian. He is. Yes. Uh, d- right. He is the d- d- ultra man or what yeah. have you. Right. That's yeah. what I intended it as. I kind of want to make an argument for yes. this show. I accept your argument. I, I haven't even it's... said my argument, but <laughs> you accept. Good. Good yeah. to know. <laughs> no, I, I understand. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I think this show really centers around the idea of Superman and his powers and uh, like what you can do, like flying around the world. Like, I loved that reference to Superman flying around the world. And and I guess they don't rewind time in this Mm. per se. They do in that art show. Um, But yeah, I, I, I think it's just that the show kind of revolves around the idea of Superman and that's where its inspiration came from. So mm. Superman yeah. analog. You, you, what you had been thinking of is Superman as the symbol of superheroism at all. And this show takes the approach of Superman is the symbol for flight. Superman and flight are synonymous. And I think yeah. that, that fits into what you were thinking about. Yeah, just a, I, him as the inspiration here. Yeah, I don't have that on my sheet, but I do have needle drop of the time period. Yes, you uh, do. And there were uh, there were a couple songs that I vaguely recognized. Uh, there aren't any major there hits. Were, they're like, not German dropping any versions like versions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not dropping any major early '90s hits that I would know, like a, a Nirvana or something. But Ooh, I, I can get this. The, the music is important to what they're doing, even if it's not music I'm very familiar with. So, so that, crossing that, off. That gave you two yes. more bingos. Uh, yes. The Superman one gave me one more bingo. Oh, boy. So, so I have. You have I have bingo. six bingos. Six. Okay, I have one, two, three, four. Four. Yeah. I have. Close, close, but no. We're getting there. We're getting there, indeed. Okay, let me save that guy, Uh, and we are good to go on bingo. Then, um, okay, let's do uh, recommendations. Melissa, what would you recommend uh, for people who enjoyed this? I can never talk about Halt and Catch Fire enough. It might be my favorite new thing, new to me thing that I've watched as part of the review show. It takes place in from 1983 to 1993. And it starts with this man who leaves IBM and he goes to the small um, computer firm in Dallas that really makes like 
calculators and things like that. And he's like, I want to get us into home computing. We're going to make the first laptop. We are going to make the first portable computer. And he gets this real uh, passionate um, software programmer who's just an absolute genius, but not like an idea man. And he gets this really idealistic, uh, oh, he's a hardware programmer. And then Cameron's the software programmer. Mm -hmm. This young punk idealistic dreams of everything that computers can mean for the future. And he just sort of, it's about this pursuit of your passion and how it, and pursuit of a, a brighter tomorrow of like using these technical skills you have to make the world better, to bring success, not just to yourself, but to like your peers, to the people you work with, to your family, to humanity, to like make a mark on your generation, to make history. And it's about obsession. It's about these work relationships that like, yeah. People are brought together and they have falling outs and then they come together again. It's about how your your professional partner is a more important relationship in your life than your spouse is. It's a beautiful times, show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like I said, it takes place over 10 years of these people's lives. It's only a four season show. It's not very long, but it spans this large chunk of time to show how technology changes and how these people's relationships to each other changes it's a yeah. real small intimate really thoughtful character driven show it's a remarkable piece of work i think about halt and catch fire all the time it's a fantastic show yeah that is absolutely one you should check out and i think is maybe the best recommendation that we can make uh yeah. like that if you like this go check out halt and catch absolutely fire. if you like yuri wait till you meet gordon <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff, which we covered all of Halt and Catch yes. Fire uh, here on the review show uh, season by se- season. So you got four episodes of yes. Melissa and I, I, I discussing it um, here on the review show. Yeah, it's it's a it's a fantastic show. We cannot recommend that one enough. Yeah. I also want to recommend something we talked about in a Patreon bonus episode of the review show. Kind of an atypical, like really odd piece of media, which is 17,776. Interesting. Which is a online multimedia narrative. It's like the web pages. It's ba- okay. It's hosted on a football blog called SB Nation. And it is about the year 17,776, where at some point in the past, human beings stopped being born and stopped aging and dying. The human population just froze the way it was. Mm -hmm. And it's been centuries and centuries and centuries. And human beings are just bored. Like they they, like they've made so many societal progressions, like there's not war, there's not pain and strife. You know, everybody's healthy, like so many healthcare problems are solved. So people just have all this time on their hands. And what they do is they play football. They play American football across the entirety of the United States. Like these yep. people, like they yep. like they can they're these super beings almost. We're like they don't need sleep and food as much. They've got real physical stamina. So it's like, yeah, I will run from one goalpost in Illinois to the other goalpost in Idaho. Like they play the sport (laughs) across the U.S. And the story is from the point of view of three satellites in space. And one of these satellites has just sort of woken up to sentience. And the other two satellites are looking down on Earth and showing him this is what has happened to humans since you were launched into space. They play this weird (laughs) football game now. And the story is told through like long dialogue exchanges and a lot of Google Earth imagery. Of course, it's been altered for this like future landscape where there have been some natural disasters and like New York City is completely underwater. But yeah, it uses a lot of zooming in and like traversing uh, landscapes that yeah. are a little bit more polygonal. It looks a lot more like TerraVision in 1994 than it looks like Google Earth in 2011. Yeah. It's a yeah. really unique, really beautiful story. It's such an oddball. I never I don't even know how to c- category. I, how do I classify this? Is it a webcomic? I don't know. It's just sort of some sort of 
sequential visual web-based narrative. There's video clips. Please seek out 17,776. It's one of my favorite anythings yeah. I have come across on the internet. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking about that at all. All, but yeah, it's one of those things where like, yeah, you'll watch a video clip and then you'll read a bunch of dialogue and then you'll scroll down. And as you scroll, it zooms in on the earth and it does this thing. And yeah, there, it, there's just all sorts of stuff in there. That's an, an interesting, uh, interesting pull for sure. Um, so besides halts and catch fire, of, I, I, I think it's pretty safe to throw Mr. Robot. In yeah. There, if you want to see maybe more of the hacker side of thing and a more modern yes. take, uh, Mr. Robot would be uh, one for you to check out. And we have covered all of that show uh, here mm-hmm. on the review show as well. So we have multiple ep- five episodes, I think. That how is that how many seasons there were? Was it was four seasons. Four. OK, so, yeah, there's four of uh, of us talking about that show as well uh i also wanted to recommend in a anime that i really really enjoy and i'm probably due for a re- 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 watch very soon called shiro bako um mm. and this is in a- anime about making anime um, oh yes and it is it's technically about this group of girls that were friends in college they were all in their like high school anime club uh and at their senior year they put a presentation together which was them making an anime uh and Mm -hmm. they showed it uh and then they graduate and they go they all go their separate ways uh and they all somehow end up in the in the anime industry uh in mm. some fashion or another as a voice actor or as an animator or as an um, assistant to the studio who knows what um and it is just this fascinating inside look into how it is made the culture and lifestyle of the people like working in that studio yeah. uh and and that space and what that what, what that is like it's not necessarily based on real events, but there are characters in there who are absolutely based off of real characters mm. or real studios uh, and and stuff like that. And so it is this like weird kind of surreal behind the scenes peak of you're like, oh, that's Hideaki Hano. That's the guy that yeah. made Neon Genesis Evangelion. <laughs> But that's not his name in this show. Yeah. And, and that's not the show he made in that show. Yeah. Right? Like it's <laughs> it's all these like knockoff versions. But it's just it's so neat uh, to, to to see all of that behind the scenes stuff. So I would highly recommend yeah. that show. Um, I don't know how long that show is, but if you think it's a good fit for the review show, I would probably pick that if you pitched it. We, so we covered it on the on the whatnots podcast oh. a long time ago uh so like the previous version mm. of the review show uh so we did let me see how, how shiro bako episode list um see how many there is here 24 so it's oh. doable in a week yeah we can um, do that in a week yeah but, yeah, a little bit, a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, th- yeah, that that one is a fantastic one. I highly recommend that. I will say that it also made me cry at the end. It was oh. so good. I'm looking at the old episode <laughs> listings. I'm trying to find when you may have covered this. Oh, I d- I don't remember exactly. It was years ago, long, long time ago. Yeah. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, this I was episode 75 of the Whatnots podcast, which was the, the previous you. incarnation of what is now the review show, which you did with your friend Paul. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is from July uh, 2017. So about five years ago. Man. Wild. Yeah. Yeah. That show was fantastic. I, I think I picked it out. I, I think I was the one that 
pitched it uh, and had never heard of it, had never seen it, didn't really know exactly what it would be like. And that's the one we picked. And it skyrocketed. It's one of my favorites. Ooh. It's fantastic. So nice. Good stuff there. Uh, but that's uh, all the recommendations. Yeah. I have. Um, so next week here yes. on the review show, uh, we are going to be covering season four of Fringe. Uh, this is mm-hmm. the show that we have been covering month to month at the end of every month. Uh, and we have season f- four of the, that show up next. Uh, and then the following month, we will do the final season, the fifth and final season of Fringe. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm excited to talk about season four. Uh, yeah. The, the, she has won some interesting things of, of notes in that season. Um, but that's what we'll do for this next week. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you guys want to go check out the show F- Fringe, uh, it is on HBO Max, uh, at least here in the United States. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys can go check that out. out, out. Um, but Alyssa, do you have pitches for the week yes. after that? Which is going to be a very special episode in that I am coming to visit you. The first time we've ever met in person. We've been doing this uh, yes. online yeah. only for, <laughs> for four plus years. So uh, I, I'm coming. I, to- we should say that we're not just randomly meeting in person for episode yes. 217 yeah. of the What Not To <laughs> Review Show. Yeah. Uh, we're yeah. about to hit episode two. 100 of the whatnots mm-hmm. captain's law which is another yes. podcast that we yes. do just a weekly off-topic pop culture show right all sorts of shenanigans in mm. that one one but right. we got to hit 200 and that is yes. why we're like that's, that's- a person <laughs> now that i live yeah. out here in the in the midwest yeah so. Yeah, you live a a pretty decent, uh, like an eight hour drive from me. And I'm like, which you lived in. I live in St. Louis. You Mm -hmm. used to live in Richmond, Virginia, which I still could have driven to. But now that you live in Oklahoma City, that's much closer. It's a real manageable weekend road trip. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we are the reason for the visit is Captain's Log 200. But we're like, since we record review show every weekend anyway, we'll just do a one off episode 217 live special mm-hmm. for review show. Yep. indeed okay <laughs> so with that in mind my theme is i have three road trip movies there we go pitch number one from 1985 i believe tim burton's first theatrically released feature film Wee's big adventure <laughs> peewee's big adventure there we go Pee Wee Herman, an eccentric childlike man, loves his red bicycle and will not sell it to his envious neighbor Francis. While Pee Wee visits his friend Dottie, the bike is stolen. Thinking his bike is at the Alamo, Pee Wee sets off on a trip where he meets many remarkable people, including waitress Simone and a motorcycle gang. Eventually, Pee Wee discovers that his bike is being used in a movie and tries to recover it. This movie sounds so strange when you write down what happens in it. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Pitch number two. Uh, These next two actually own on DVD. Pitch number two is the millennial classic. A goofy movie. Goofy movie. Yes. Yes. Uh, What does the back of this DVD say? This rockin' and rollin' modern-day story finds the lovable Goofy bonding with his teenage son Max on a cross-country road trip. But en route to the old fishing hole, they find themselves up to their floppy ears in misadventure. Will Max learn there's nothing wrong with taking after dear old dad, even if he is a little goofy? The question is answered in the show-stopping finale when Max and Goofy crash the stage at the wildest rock concert ever. Man, rock concert. That's what they descri- described it as. That not, it is not a rock concert that they go to. I go to. <laughs> I, oh, how to classify power line is genre unto himself. Yeah. Pop. Uh, pop. And R&B. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pitch number three. Uh, I have often griped at you 
that you lack more than the very most basic cursory knowledge about this group of characters. And perhaps this is your time to learn about my dear friends in the Muppet movie. The Muppet movie. <laughs> oh, man. OK. <laughs> They're irreverent, irrepressible and downright irresistible, Kyle. They're the Muppets. See their meteoric rise to fame and fortune. See how it began. A rainbow, a song, and a frog. After a fateful meeting with a big-time talent agent, Kermit the Frog heads for Hollywood dreaming of showbiz. Along the way, Fozzie Bear, the great Gonzo, and the dazzling Miss Piggy join him in the hopes of becoming film stars, too. But all bets are off when Kermit falls into the clutches of Doc Hopper, a fast food mogul seeking to promote his French fried <laughs> French fried frog leg franchise. Featuring the Oscar nominated song The Rainbow Connection and side splitting appearances by some of the biggest names on the silver screen, including Steve Martin, Mel Brooks, Orson Welles and more. Uh, this fully restored and remastered 50th anniversary edition of the Muppet movie. It's a critically acclaimed comedy classic. Your whole family will treasure for all time. Melissa, you have made this insanely difficult. <laughs> three road trip movies. Since it's a big, like, in-person special, I thought I'd go for three fairly well-recognized, popular sure. movies. Family movies. We're recording an episode we could show to our moms. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you, you have said that I don't know anything about my Muppets, which is true. Uh, I have seen odds and ends of Muppet paraphernalia <laughs> right um <laughs> but I, I i don't have a working knowledge of the mm. muppets like you do you're you're a uh -huh. muppet fan um you're yes. a lot more f familiar that is one that I, I think we should watch the goofy movie is also one of my favorite movies period right um, for so, most people in our age range yeah it is one of disney's best movies in my opinion and still is it's great mm. uh underrated i feel like even as as much as i love it and you say yeah this mm. is the, the millennial classic right yeah i it just I love so I I don't I I can't pick between those two and I it has to be one of those two. I'm sorry, right. Pee Wee, but uh, you're not making the cut, unfortunately. Right. You, I'm sorry, um, Mr. Herman. You were here to round out the pitch group of three. Um, uh, yeah, I I feel like we have to go with the Muppet movie. Though, thank you just with thank the, you. the fact of how much it's come up in the show <laughs> yes. of like how, kyle how do you not know any of these muppets i'm like oh. <laughs> right you're like you know there's the blue one there's that bear in the hat you know muppets <laughs> yeah exactly um so yes we will watch the muppet movie when melissa comes to town uh and yes. we get to meet in person and record yeah. this in person uh, yes so th th that that will be a lot of fun uh but mm -hmm. yeah i'm excited thank you thank you thank you for giving me this gift of learning about muppets uh Absolutely. Yeah, this can be viewed on disney plus i believe okay, cool the, the, the muppets are part of the larger disney family sounds good to me good stuff well yeah that's what we will do in two weeks uh, but mm -hmm. once again don't forget that next week is season four of fringe and that's what we will be up to. Uh, but yeah, that about wraps us up for this one. So, Melissa, where can the people find you on the Internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. And listen to my other podcast, Saturday Morning Obscurities. Show where me and my brother Jams talk about weird old kid shows you feel like only you remember. Good stuff. Um, you guys can find me. At, oh, come, on, come on. I hit the button before we started uh. recording and it just, <laughs> now it's start. I don't know what is up with this this thing here, uh, but you guys can find me at Yo Kyle Sp Springer on Twitter. If you'd like to stay up to date with all the stuff we do at the Whatnots, we are at the Whatnots on Twitter. So please go like, share and subscribe. That would help us out a ton. Uh, this has been number 215 of the Whatnots review show. We will see you all next time. Bye. Bye.